Oh, man, everyone is so miserable. You got to smile or we're never going to make it, you know. Oh, the cabin fever has just inundated everybody. Everyone's got a bad attitude. We got to smile. God loves you. So does uh, somebody does. <laughs> Woo! We got to talk a little bit of snow here in our rundown tonight, and then we're going to uh, meet with Steve Alquist. Well, that was kind of Freudian. Uh, Steve is an atheist, so he would probably quarrel with the idea that God loves you because there is no God. I didn't bring him on to talk about that, but he's one of the lead atheists, atheist spokespeople types uh, in the region. Uh, he's also somebody who's arguing vociferously that the kind of protests that we've seen across major interstate highways uh, should not be the subject of felony charges, and it's a reaction to State Senator Lou Raptakis's proposed legislation that calls for that. So he is our guest tonight, and we'll talk with him coming up momentarily. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you aboard. I know you've got Major League Cabin Fever. I hope I can help it a little bit with, I don't know, some discussion of snow. Hey, I'm not the weather person. Uh, they're still talking about one to three or maybe more on Thursday and maybe another whack over the weekend. There will be Virginia a spring, no doubt. But in the meantime, let's go down and see what they're talking about today. And one of the things they're talking about is throwing the snow in the river. And in Boston, if you think it's bad in, uh, in southern New England, take a look at what Boston has to deal with. And the transportation system shut down completely today, at least the trains. Get it? Charlie shuts down. Charlie? Uh, Jess wrote that. Uh, and, of course, the budgets are always strained. We always have to learn about that when it comes to the snow. And this was a bad news development midday today during the radio show, weekdays, noon to 3 on WPRO, when this came across the desk. Joe Almeida all jammed up. He's a state representative, and I think all the cabin fever is probably going to send Powerball through the roof, and of course we want to hear what you have to say on your state of mind. So let's dig in, shall we? In the river? I mean, it's amazing to me what moves phones on a radio show these days, and all you have to do is have the mayor kind of, you know, wonder out loud about whether we should dump the snow in the river and well, people have a lot to say about it. This notion of patience is ridiculous. Uh, people don't have patience anymore. And there needs to be a more extraordinary effort in the city of Providence specifically. I told you last week, Governor had uh, an easy time during the blizzard. It's the mayors that have the tougher time. And so far, Jorge Alorza is not winning any uh, you know, points with the general population. I think a lot of it has to do with the lousy communication strategy that they've had. And, you know, frankly, they seem to be kind of behind the eight ball. Look, the storm is the storm, and it's been very difficult. I'm not going to switch pitch because I've been talking about, hey, it's, you know, we've had some really tough snow, and you've got to live with some of the challenges there. But, you know, driving through the city of Providence today, just to double check everybody, there are too many dangerous neighborhoods right now, and Jorge Alorza is just this close, but not ready to pull the trigger on dumping some of the snow in the water. We've been in touch with the uh, Department of, of Environmental Management, and from what I understand, uh, they might make that available to cities and towns, but look, you know, that, that, that triggers issues of contamination and things like that. That's an absolute worst-case scenario. Well, I don't know what is worst-case scenario, but by the way, the DEM, I read all the regulations, and the DEM allows for a city to do this without penalty. So he's, uh, he's playing a little bit loose with uh, the real facts there. In the meantime, former Mayor Joe Paolino is speaking up. He was on WPRO today, and he's saying throw it in the river. Look, it's not good, but and, and, and you can't be in denial about it. But instead of hopping about how bad it is, just take the time now, get more vendors, put together a plan with your DPW, dump the snow into the water over there. And there you have it. Simple as that. My solution is... I wish we could go find one. It's hard to get one. Uh, the good Massachusetts governor is asking New York for a couple more, and that is this kind of machine, the snow melter. I love the snow melter. Now, this one is kind of an old one. And they go for, I mean, this sucker is probably three, four $400,000, you know, the newer version of it. And although it doesn't look uh, very profound right there, I mean, some of these babies really, really work very efficiently. And what they do is they take the dirty snow keep the dirt in the uh, cargo area there and heat it out and spill it out. We don't have any of these here in Rhode Island. We don't have any in, in the city of Providence, and we need one. We should have been in a situation where we got ahead of this and leased one. 
I think we should buy one. And I don't want to hear that we don't have the money. We should have one around. They rotate. I mean, you can, I mean, you can carry them. You can move them around a community rather than trucking snow across the city back and forth. You know, one guy actually said to me today, take it down to Rocky Point. I'm sure the people who work would just love to see all the Providence trucks towing snow <laughs> out to Rocky Point. Oh, man. We need the snow melter, man. That's what we need. Well, it's tougher in Boston. Charlie shuts down Charlie, you know, choo-choo. Charlie, do you get that? That's Jess. She wrote that. Uh, headline. Yeah. Uh, the governor is a little frustrated with the whole situation. He talked about the MBTA and its shutdown. By the way, I said yesterday that if, in fact, the T was uncomfortable late yesterday about their ability to operate today, I was much happier with them giving us that answer and saying that the system's not going to run today so people could plan accordingly instead of saying, you know, we'll be open on an abbreviated schedule and not delivering on that, which I think for most people creates much bigger issues. Scary. Anyway, uh, you want to get a laugh or you'll cry? Uh, for those of you who ride the MBTA, the T, uh, it's general manager Beverly Scott. She laid the lumber down. It's too old to work. When we talk about things like the switches and the signals, you are talking, I don't have any buttons I can push. You are talking about people literally out there with pickaxes, shovels, and propane tanks that are, that are getting those old switches, just like in the old railroad movies you see, that are actually making those switches get from being the ice. Well, infrastructure is a problem all across America. That speech certainly highlights it. At press time, meaning the time that we were putting our show together, which don't tell anybody, happens in the late afternoon, we did not yet know what the MBTA schedule would be like for tomorrow. So keep your eyes and ears open uh, for those outlets that you would check with about their status tomorrow. And of course, it's always a big complaint about the budget, right? Budget, 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 budget problems. The plowing headlines are always profound. And we parade around and we check the entire region. And the mayors are quick to tell you that they're at or above their budgets. And while I appreciate budgets, and you do have to know why you're spending, what, where, how, what, you know, whatever. Uh, just stop with this. Like, does anybody out there not think that this weather and this surge of snow has put pressure on the budgets? What I worry about when mayors start talking about budget problems, I worry about them pulling back the very essence of the public service that we expect from our taxpayer dollar input. Find the money and figure it out later because it's nothing more important than public safety and access when it comes to the priorities of our taxpayer money. Now, speaking of uh, <sighs> actually, I had a thought there. I'm going to change my approach. Uh, oh, no, Joe. This is, this is live television. Well, it's ad-lib television. Anyway, this was, when I saw this, I, uh, this is bad. Joe Almeida, the state representative from Providence, resigned his majority deputy whatever, whip of, you know, there's like 30 of these guys with titles up there. They're like bankers. They all got titles. Uh, due to prior legal issues. Yeah, he got jammed up today. The state police announced that they had arrested, arrested state representative Joe Almeida for a cash flow problem, meaning the cash that was in his campaign account in 2012, they allege went to his wallet or his checking account. The Board of Elections reportedly on a number of occasions tried to get Joe to come clean on the uh, discrepancies in his campaign finance report. He came in there last year with an accountant trying to figure it out, but you know what? Sometimes you can't get water from the rock, meaning he obviously didn't have the answers that would have bailed him out of a situation, and so now he's been charged with a felony, which is uh, misuse of uh, public funds. That's too bad. You know, Joe, for all intents and purposes, is a pretty good guy. I just saw him on, on Susan Hogan's uh, uh, piece on the news last week about, you know, car loan uh, culprits out there, you know, the, the high-interest vultures that prey on people, and Joe was going to write the bill to correct the wrong, and... You know, he lists on his, on his resume, by the way, that he's a financial analyst. Okay, he's a retired police officer with a problem right now. And the number is what, 450, then 480? 
now, I bet you with the kind of stir-crazy disposition we all have, I bet you it goes to 500 before. It's tomorrow night, right? Or is it tonight? Tomorrow. What is today? Tuesday. Tuesday. What color is our room? Green. <laughs> oh, my goodness. By tomorrow night, I bet you it's 500 million because we're all dreaming of a home and a place, not this, no doubt about it. Your state of mind is important to me and to everybody. Just tweet at us, Facebook post. Call us. Leave us a voicemail at 228-1886. How about this tweet from some wise guy? Team Global, oh, oh, Global Warming Alerts. What does that mean, Jess? Thank God for Global Warming. Thank God for Global Warming, or we'd be really getting nailed with the snow. All right, then. Appreciate you weighing in. When we come back, this gentleman says, it'd be a crime to charge these people with a crime. They will. Your protest is a premeditated act, and you're blocking a, 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 an important artery of the state that you can jeopardize someone's life, plain and simple. And that's why you have to treat it not like a misdemeanor, a felony. And look, we have many laws in the books, felonies, uh, assault and battery, uh, second-time shoplifting is a felony, uh, writing a bad check intentionally is a felony, drunk driving, Third offense is a felony, but if there's bodily injury, death resulting, it's a felony. How about some more uh, crime trivia there? There's a long excerpt from Lou Raptakis, but he makes the point about how he feels how grave this act is. And, you know, I'm kind of with him. Headline here, they ain't with him. A felony for blocking roads un American, according to. The author, Steve Alquist, who joins me. Steve, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Nice to have you. Thank you. Uh, you are a writer. You write for RA Future, mm -hmm. which is a, uh, a very uh, compelling blog, I think. Sometimes I actually agree with the stuff that you guys yeah, write. Yeah, once in a while we Every do once in a while. It, sure. Um, lay it on me. What's yeah. the problem? Well I, well, I don't think it should be a felony. Um, it's really that simple. Sarah, thanks for coming. And right, that'll cool. wrap up the show. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I don't think it should be a felony because there, it's already a crime. There's already a series of crimes that are, I mean, it's disorderly conduct. Five people were charged in Rhode Island. Two people have already been settled in court. One settled, uh, she got a filing and 50 hours of community service. The other is serving six months probation, 100, dollars, 100 hours of community service, and a $500 fine. Making a felony seems to be unnecessary. Well, I, I don't know whether this is going to preclude uh, the next stunt like this. Mm -hmm. um, if you're suggesting that that penalty suffices, clearly the people who are deciding to come across highways knew that it was not legal. Right. So it did not preclude them from acting out anyway. So whatever right. list of penalty you provided us was not a deterrent, right? Right, but then, then again, um, civil disobedience isn't about deterrence. Is it, I mean, is it about coming up with a punishment that will prevent any civil disobedience? I mean, civil disobedience has a long history in our country, and we right. wouldn't want to be putting Martin Luther King in jail for a year on some kind of enhanced charges that we put whenever he did something that we didn't like. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think anybody is suggesting that civil disobedience is in and of itself un-American or, mm -hmm. or, 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 well, I don't want to use the un-American term in, in, sure. in, in the wrong context. Look, I mean, even Martin Luther King Jr., the references, you have a reference to Selma in this particular article, right? Because mm -hmm. the I, movie just came out. Right, the, but in Selma they marched. They were moving. Mm. There was a lane available if an ambulance had to come through. That's true. This, this strapping yourself to, to the highway. Well, that's it, not what it, happened in Rhode Island. That's what happened in Boston. Well, there was just a one-up in Boston. Yeah, but well, true, but I'm just pointing out there was a difference between what happened in Rhode Island and what we're doing here and what happened in Boston. Here's the difference. In terms of what? The premeditation, the strategies, and the tactics used? Yeah, I would say that nobody strapped themselves to barrels in Providence or did any of that yet. Or, I mean, I say yet because I'm not saying I have any idea what they'll do next, but 
I'm just saying that that didn't happen here. It, let me ask you this, just so we can clear the deck. I'm not sure people are wondering. Is this the kind of thing that you could see yourself doing? No, I didn't. In fact, I was there that night, and I was filming um, for Rhode Island Future, and I didn't go on the highway for a variety of reasons, but mostly because, you know, there was a lot of equipment with me, and there's a lot big fence to jump over, and I'm not, you know, going to be doing that. But well, there was well you didn't do it because you had too many well, things you were carrying, or because you had a philosophical problem, thought it was irresponsible? Well, I, didn't, I wouldn't do it myself. If it were me and it was my protest, I wouldn't be jumping on the highway. I don't think that... Because? I don't, well, I don't think... Well, because I think the messaging is off. But I think that's a different idea. I wouldn't want to criticize these people on their tactics, because that's their call. I think their call has to be, they have to decide what they want to do for their cause. I don't know that it was the best message to send, but I wouldn't say that what they did was necessarily um, something that deserves a felony conviction. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to agree with you on that point. In fact, mm -hmm. Lou Reptakis and I, where are we, Kev? I'm going I'm to kind of flip to the uh, next segment, and I'll do that from that camera or that camera. There we go. Uh, when we come back, Lou Raptakis actually tried to make that point. I said, that's not your job, Lou. Hmm. Uh, however, uh, the essence of misdemeanor or felony, I'm still, I'm still supporting that concept. We'll talk about it a little more, Steve, when we come back to it. Okay. You can protest this. Hundreds of venues to protest. You can protest in front of the state capitol. You can protest anywhere. But why are you doing it in, a, in an area where you are jeopardizing the public? You're jeopardizing someone else. You know, the problem, Dan, here is also when they do these type of things, protesting on I-93, I-95, they're losing their purpose, their focus. They're focusing on an issue, and they're angering the public, and plus putting the public in jeopardy. Yeah, so, you know, as Lou started to argue tactics when he was here last time, that's about a couple of weeks ago when State Senator Lou Reptekis was here, talking about taking these highway protests to a felony charge. Uh, Steve made a point here prior, and I, I agree with you, mm -hmm. that we shouldn't be legislating strategy. Right. So if the message was lost, and I think it completely was for both the folks at 93 and on 95, 95 in Providence first, then 93 in Boston, where people were so apoplectic about the byproduct of the protest that they forgot it was about Ferguson mm -hmm. and, you know, Black Lives Matter and all the... Right. It's not his job to penalize you for calling out or, or executing a poor strategy. Yeah, that's, I, I think that's part of what I the, agree with the you. legislation does, exactly. So let's forget about that part. Okay. Putting the public in danger at a level when you've got highways close to medical facilities and the like seems to me to be way past civil disobedience boundaries. And the misdemeanors that we have hardly deter, and criminal statutes are in part about deterrence, hardly deter folks from thinking long and hard about having that on their record. I think it's grave enough. Well, I'll, um, Andy Horwitz, who's a professor of law at Roger Williams, uh, spoke at the hearings for the Hall Bill, the Representative Hall Bill, which is similar to the Rapakis Bill. Mm -hmm. And he said that felon, uh, the manslaughter charges could still apply if somebody was on the highway being blocked. They would, then there would be felony manslaughter charges that could be brought up. Because if they a death resulting from blocking the highway, and if they could show that the bl highway blockers caused that, or delayed the person from getting it, then, th then those charges could be brought. So they're already, again, were covered under the law. He said there was be no problem with bringing those kind of charges. And so again, I don't see the necessity for a felony on this when we already have a reasonable amount of time that even the law that Reptakis has suggested is only saying a year in prison. Right now, we're still looking at a year on first on the first offense. On the first, well, that's with sixty days minimum mandatory. Right, with, which Judge's is different. discretion between sixty days and, and a year. Yeah. And I think uh, 60 days mandatory is also, I mean, for instance, one person got six months probation, yeah. which could just as easily have been a few days in jail or a couple weeks in jail if she wanted to. Well, there's a big the difference between plus. 60 and a few days or, or uh, a couple well, of weeks. Or but six months probation is not a small, it's not a small thing. Yeah. It sounds like, uh, but it's also, but, there, but these are not, also remember, these are not people who, um, the person who was charged or recently convicted, she, um, she's a farmer. Right, so she has things she has to do. She has 100 hours of community service to do. Again, that's two and a half weeks of full-time work to do 
These are not sm these are not small. All right, charges. So your worry is what? Somebody that does something this stupid shouldn't have to pay the price for the rest of their lives with a felony charge. I think that's one of my worries. Exactly. Is it the jail time itself, or is it the record? I think the record is a big, big problem. I mean, part of the reason that they have this Black Lives Matter movement is because we're talking about the overcriminalization of people of color. We're talking about profiling. We're talking about police brutality. And so, in response, instead of doing anything to address their concerns, we the Senator Raptakis has introduced a bill to criminalize their behavior. Well, wait a second. You were involved um, in filming the protest mm -hmm. that took place uh, proximate to the Public Safety Building, right? Mm -hmm. I was Which was the night that. of the, the 95 mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like that particular protest got ample attention, and the conversation about what the mission was about wasn't lost until right. the 95 thing happened. I uh, would I would say that we're still talking about it. Which is something that not, doesn't happen with many protests, and so even you though we're would talking, say or you wouldn't say. I would say that we're still talking about the Black Lives Matter. If, even if we're only talking about it in terms of whether the highway was the proper response or not, we're still talking about it. It's still in the news, and it's still coming up constantly. Well, uh, we God forbid the next mistake that occurs out there in terms of black-white um, loss of life, law enforcement to, to the citizens. Uh, I mean, we go on all day about the equities um, in, in law enforcement, and you know those conversations. I think need to be had. I, th you know, we, I thought we had some very healthy conversation, even on the radio show, about what's really at stake here. The Ferguson story and the Staten Island story. I didn't see as the same. The grand juries weren't behaving the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's what I have seen: no local conversation of any net worth at all whatsoever mm -hmm. in Providence and Boston about this particular systemic societal law enforcement relationship problem since these interstate protests. Strategy mistake, big time. And it seems to me that it is because it was such a, a, a grievous offense in well, terms of public perception that the message has been completely lost. Could Senator Reptakis have introduced a bill to address some of those concerns instead of a bill to do this? Because well, knowing that it's already criminalized. I, I, I almost walked right back in my, in, into yeah. the same trap. Um, maybe I'll have you and Lou here to kind of talk about it if you'll take up that uh, that debate. Yeah, we can Love do that to have you. But here's the thing. Let me ask you a final question. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel kind of silly arguing for the rights of people to Ar straight traipse across an interstate highway? And, um, and block I'm not arguing for their right to traipse across. I'm arguing or, or, that they or a mitigated penalty for them. I'm to not do not such. even mitigated. They're, I'm saying that the penalties that exist right now are already decent enough. I mean, literally, people could go to jail under the statute we have right now. But they haven't. But they haven't because the judge and the legal system sees it in a different context. They don't see it as a serious... The, nobody was hurt. Had somebody been hurt, additional penalties could have applied. But we didn't have that happen, fortunately. So right now, we have what we have. All right. We'll, keep, we'll, 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 we'll take up the debate All right, uh, cool. again again. Good to see you. Thank you for Thank coming you in. Steve Alquist. One more thing and we come back. Now, I'm not going to play the original Moses Brown video because I don't have to. There's a sequel to more school closings. Hit the pit with plastic sled. Or stay at home and snug in bed. For whether you wake or softly doze. Or shocked again with endless nose. So we say by song and poem and prose, it's happened again. And school is Just look at the Moses Brown videos if you've got cabin fever and you feel like you want to punch a wall. It makes it easier. We'll see you tomorrow on, on the radio at noon on WPRL. Bye.